Good afternoon. My name is Thomas Peckham, and I'm here today to talk about the VNX2. I want to cover four specific features, multi-core fast cache, fully automated storage tiering for virtual pools or fast VP, policy-based hot sparing, and monitoring and reporting software. First, I want to ask a question, though. What do we want from storage? Storage needs to be invisible to your infrastructure, easy to manage, and just work. You need a single storage array to be good at consolidating multiple workloads. We need it to handle VMware, SQL, and Oracle databases, and also file services. And further, you need a single array to do a good job of serving both capacity as well as performance. And we need to do this at a cheap cost. Here's how the BNX could help with that. So what we'll start with is multi-core fast cache. First, we're going to start with multi-core cache. What is multi-core cache? Because that is a big part of the setup here. Multi-core cache is a software component that utilizes the DRAM of the storage processors to increase the host read and write performance without having to go to multi-core fast cache. What's new in this is now you have the ability to set read and write limits instead of having to configure them manually. And because of the ever-changing requirements, that takes the guesswork out of it. Uh, so on to multi-core fast cache. So multi-core fast cache sits between the DRAM and the back-end disks. It is comprised of solid-state drives, and it can be scaled uh, in size based on individual needs, whatever you need it to be. It's how much money you want to put into this specific feature. All ones have the ability to have fast cache enabled for access to this high performance storage, and it's for every single application on that one. And data is copied to this fast cache based on the frequency of access to this data. If you have files and data that's being hit a lot, instead of having to go down to the disk, it's going to store it in this fast cache and allow you to access it quicker, giving you better performance. Now, I guess the question is, why do you need this fast cache? Why not just create arrays with solid state drives? Well, the fast cache allows you to leverage the lower response time and better IOPS of flash drives without dedicating flash drives to specific applications. Again, every single application on every single one that's enabled with fast cache is going to have access to this. And based on needs of the applications and files, is whether or not it's going to be in this fast cache. So your high, your high hit stuff that's constantly changing is going to be coming in and out of this fast cache and really increase performance for your users. So let's draw this out, how this works. So here we have a host, IO, coming in as well as going out. And here is that multi-core cache I was talking about. That is kind of sitting, acting as a liaison between both the backend disk arrays and the multi-core cache. So obviously for the multi-core cache, it can access your backend disks. From here, you go down, and this is multi-core fast cache. All your solid state drives that you dedicated to this are right here. Also from here is what we have called a memory map. An example of how this works. Host wants to do a read, comes into the multi-core cache. From there, it's going to check and see if it has it in the DRAM. If it has it in the DRAM, it stops right there, accesses it, goes right back out to the host. If it doesn't, it then comes down to the memory map. The memory map is going to tell it if it's here in the multi-core fast cache. And if it's not there, it's going to go back to the multi-core cache and down to your back end disks. 
If it is there, of course, it will point it down to the multi-core fast cache, and you will have your ability to read from there. Anything that is frequently hit from out here, if it's not in the multi-core fast cache, it will be added from here to there, and the memory map will be updated. So how does the write work? Multi-core cache accepts and acknowledges the I.O. It then copies it from here down to your back-end disks. And while it's doing that, it's checking the memory map to see if it's in the multi-core fast cache. If yes, the data is then updated, which then becomes dirty, and we'll discuss that at a later time, and the memory map is then updated as well. If not, the data is saved to the back-end disks, and, uh, and access, of course, becomes more frequent. It will be moved over here with the updated thing, with the updated uh, copy, and it will be a clean page. Moving on to FastVP, like I said, fully automated storage tiering for virtual pools. Storage provisioning is a repetitive and time consuming and not always obvious how to match capacity to performance. And even on top of that, even when you do achieve it and you have it perfect, requirements are always changing. So how does FastVP help that? FastVP is the ability of the storage array to periodically move data based on the performance needs. Now, what do you need to be able to do this? Well, you're going to need storage pools. You have to have storage pools with all three tiers of data. You're going to need solid state drives, SAS drives, and SATA drives, or extreme performance, performance, and capacity. Now, how it works um, is based on three strategies. What it does is it will collect the stats of the data, it's going to analyze those stats, and then it's going to relocate that data with a new granularity of 256 megs. And I'll explain the granularity right now. Let's imagine you had 500 megabytes of contiguous LBA range hot data that needed to be moved from SAS to solid state drive. Now, the old VNX, excuse me while I erase this. <clears throat> The old VNX had granularity slices of one gigabyte. So this is our SAS. We're going to be moving this over to SSD. So if you need to move this 500 megabit slice, even though it's only 500 megs, because the slice size is one gig, over here on your solid state drives, you're going to be taking up one gig of space. Now let's extrapolate that. That doesn't sound too bad here, but say we have a 100 gigabyte solid state drive. And we're using this equation right here. So we'd have 100 gigs of solid state drive times 500 megabytes is what we need to move. But actually what's being moved is 100 times one gigabit. So now what do we have? We have a 50% utilization and efficiency of that solid state disk. Not something that many people can afford. I don't, uh, I don't like wasting solid state drives. And I'm sure you don't either. So how does that get fixed in the new VNX? Now, the slices are 256 megabytes, four times the granularity of before. So we need to move 500 megabytes. It now creates two slices of 256 and it's all hot data, nothing waste. Much higher utilization, much higher. That's gonna save money on not only 
solid state drives, but also getting data off there and coming on to your SAS or SATA drives. <clears throat> Okay, moving on, let's talk about policy-based hot sparing. Before, hot spares were configured by the storage administrator manually. Very prone to error because it involved calculating the amount of hot spares needed to prevent the risk of data loss. Now, easy for the initial install um, because best practice for every 30 disks, for every 30 disks, you have one hot spare. Easy to do that during initial setup. But what about when you start adding disks to arrays and growing that environment? Now you're having to keep track. And not only are you doing this, but you're also naming the disk that that's going to act as the hot spare. So once the, say a drive goes bad, once that drive was replaced, the hot spare went back to being the spare. That's how you kept track of that. Now, instead of defining this, you are now setting a policy for this. So you'll say, I have SAS drives, and you come down here and say, for every 30 disks, same as this, I want one hot spare. Or of course, you can do whatever you'd like. Say you're on your SSDs, for every 20 disks, I want one hot spare. They're more expensive. Now, when you have a disk go bad, any available disk not being used will take the place of the one that goes bad. And it will stay in that array. And when you replace the other disk, that now becomes the new hot spare. A little easier on the emissions rate, on the administrative side of things. So finally, monitoring and reporting software. Monitoring reporting software was in the original VNX, but it came at a cost. Um, now, anything has changed. It's still the easy to use UI that allows you to generate reports, do capacity planning, analyze storage consumption, as well as analyze performance. Uh, the kicker of what's worth mentioning now for the VNX2 is it is now free. They are now giving this away and uh, not and no longer charging for it. So anytime they are giving something away for free, I feel that's a feature worth mentioning. Now that uh, covers everything that I had to talk about today. I appreciate your time and thank you very much.